Let's start this morning, verse 29. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, necessary for edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. New NLT, New Living says, Do not use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. How are we doing on that one? Let, let me try that again. Don't use foul or abusive language. You ever meet people who like to use foul language to shock you? Even Christians. They like to shock people with their foul language. We need to be real careful. Again, don't use imperative mood. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for, and necessary for edification that's building up, that it may impart grace to the hearers. I want to stop right there. I want to focus on the word corrupt. Because when we allow corrupt speech, rotten, putrid, vile, decayed. It's a word you'd give to rotten as in spoiled meat, rotten fruit. One bad apple. There we go. Thank you. Is she the only one that ever heard that? You all know that, don't you? And you know how it works because that one bad apple affects all the rest. Now, one bad potato. You ever get that bad potato in the bag? You had it in the, the pantry? I mean, you know what I'm talking about, I think. But what's it do? It affects, it not only stinks up the whole pantry, but it affects the other potatoes. But the word is corrupt. It, 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 not only is it corrupt, it's the same word that is in John uh, 11, 39, when it refers to a dead body, it stinketh. Don't, oh, don't call Lazarus out, he's going to stink. It's the same corrupt word. Because corrupt words, garbage talk is not only the talk which is corrupt, but talk that has a corrupting influence, negative influence, a negative spin. We can all do it. Come on, folks, let's be honest. If we want to turn something, we can say the right words with the right attitude at the right way, and it'll be taken negatively. That's a corrupting influence. Words themselves may not be foul, but a foul atmosphere can be created by words because of an attitude that attends them. That's what the imperative here is. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement, building up to those who hear them. Let no corrupt, corrupt word proceed from your mouth, but that which is good necessary for edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. We need to understand, we need to be a people who don't, we need to, at the end of this service, I'm gonna, we're going to pray. And I'm going to say, hey, if you've got some habits you want to be prayed for, we've got people who are going to pray for you. And we need to break some of those chains. How many of you grew up, ah, I better not do that. Yeah, how many, it, it, it's a popcorn service. Um, up, down. When I was in school, and, and uh, it was a while back. But we, there was, there was a, a thing going through society at that time, or at least the younger drink, where we, we had cutting remarks, critical cutting remarks. And, and, and the person, Rich Steele, good friend, don't ever, ever say the wrong thing to him because he can cut you so quick with his words. And everybody will laugh. He had that ability. And, and, and I'm not going to say it was demonic. I, I think it was probably learned to find something in you, your dress, your clothing, whatever, and say something so negative. It was hilarious, but then people would, would laugh at you. You ever have those, they, they say negative things, and then they say, I'm just kidding. This should not be with us. 
If this is a habit with us, then we need to stop it. If it's part of us, it's not part of the characteristics that God has called us to. For the next hundred days, let's our words bring life and not death. Eliminate words that hurt, demean, belittle. We need to eliminate words that are negative and harmful if we are going in the process of putting on the new man. The talk of the new person of Christ is the words that bring life. That's our speech. That which is building up, that which is good, helpful for the occasion. Ministering grace into the hearers. The words we speak need to be which God can use to help others. Philip's translation. Proverbs 15, 23b says, A word spoken in due season, how good it is. How good it is. Have you ever had a situation where you weren't quite sure what was going on? You were feeling a little disappointed and... uh, you just thought, well, I don't know how. And somebody came up, well, that was really good. That was really good. Man, you really did a good play, whatever it was. And it just, whoa, because you were feeling down, but you were thinking negatively, and the person came up and gave you a word. Come on, I'm not the only person that's had somebody come up and say that to him. I've had sermons I preached that it went over like a lead balloon. I mean, boom, never got off the floor. And I thought, oh, man. No, and people email, oh, that was great. I really enjoyed it. You've got to be kidding me. You got something out of that? But it's amazing how the Lord will use people, and I want to be one of those that he can use to encourage others. I want to be one of those to be able to spot somebody when they're not, they're not doing great and just have a word from the Lord from, the Lord loves you. You don't have to say, thus saith God. You just need to simply say, you know, the Lord is really pleased with you. Because He is. Or that was a really kind thing. Well, it's the truth. Negatively. It doesn't matter if it's the truth. I've had people say that to me. Well, it's the truth. It doesn't matter if it's the truth. It's the way you said it. Maybe Thumper had it right. What did Thumper say? Can't say something nice. Don't say anything at all. Have you ever met somebody? I know I haven't mentioned this couple before. Thelma and Phil Carlson. Aunt and uncle. They're, they're with the Lord now. They're maybe 120, I guess. Maybe not that. Maybe 110, 15. Phil, Uncle Phil got his doctorate in physics in 1929 from the University of Washington. I didn't even know they knew about physics in 1929. But the thing about Aunt Thelma and Uncle Phil is very wonderful, wonderful people, great Christians, very successful, both of them extremely brilliant, but humble. I don't care the mood you were in when you went into their presence. But when you were in their presence, you began to feel better. And when you left their presence, you felt great. It, you, you just wanted to be around them. No matter if it was good or bad or indifferent, you wanted to be around them. I want us to be those kind of people. That the words that we impart, the attitude that we have, the care that we show, is a care that says, I care about you. I want to be one of those people. I pray that we've had an example like Aunt Thelma and Uncle Phil. But I pray more that we be the example. When you were in their presence and when you left their presence, you felt better about yourself. That's part of the 100-day challenge. Lord, if you're calling us to these characteristics, people loved being around Jesus. Oh, he did miracles. He, he gave them lunch. No, they loved being around him. Because even in confrontation, it was loving. When they left his presence, or they were in their presence, they knew they were important. Do people know they're important when they're in our presence? Do we show them grace? 
Anything else needs to be curtailed. 100-day challenge. We can do it! Verse 30. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way that you live. Remember, He has identified you as His own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. New Living Translation, New Century Translation says, The Spirit is God's proof that you belong to Him. King James, New King James says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I think one of the ways we grieve the Holy Spirit is the fact that the way we talk. If we're critical and condemning, I don't think that does the Holy I don't think he enjoys that. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. God is calling for a people who impact the world. And we start that impact before we say a word. The way we live our lives, the way that we interact with people. God is, everyone here is a minister. You understand that. If Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are a minister. Simply say, I am a minister. I am a minister. That's if you're saved. We'll talk about salvation later. But the reality is that we need to be a people who other people allow, want to be around. And we need to understand that the Holy Spirit lives in us. And do not bring sorrow, grief to the Holy Spirit by the way you live. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Our tongues, our attitudes, the way we interact with others to be a cause of sorrow and grief to the Holy Spirit. True confession time. Let's get into the little booth here. Okay, close the door. Um, I remember very clear, very, very clearly in my life, uh, we were in Bible college, I think it was our second year. I had three kids, and they were little kids, and I was blah, 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 blah. Came Christmas time, and somebody in the finance office, I don't know why, just thought, you know, we're going we're gonna to take on this family for Christmas. Because quite honestly, when you're living in financial embarrassment, that's Life Bible College, um, or now, now, you know, that, that's what the acronym was for, or uh, anyway. I, and I didn't think it was that bad. I, I worked summers uh, fishing and was able to pay my school bill, but then Safeway, all the time, and along the short of it is, this lady went to Florence Avenue Foursquare, and she taught the adult Bible study, Sunday school class. And she thought, okay, let's, let's take on a family. So they took on us. And they got presents and money for our kids, and they did some other things, just out of the blue, had no idea. Um, anyway, and then they gave both of us a certificate just to spend on ourselves. Don't, 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 don't buy the other. We've already, you know, we've already got presents for Patty and for you. And I remember, I, I, after Christmas, I held on to that certificate. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go. And there was a, a Macy's. And they had a coat sale. And, and I needed a, a new suit coat. And then that coat coat, you know, dress suit coat. And I went to this rack. And somebody had obviously, when they were, they were pricing the tag, pricing them, they had forgotten a zero. And I'm going, whoa! And these are, were they tweed with the leather patches? And we're talking styling in 1980. We're talking styling. I even had a hat, you know. <laughs> this kid is styling. And I grabbed two of them. And I rushed them up to the counter. And, and they said, oh, no, no, this can't be right. And I said, it's on that rack right there, that one rack. I pulled him right. Oh, no, 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 no. It's got, and, and being in the grocery, oh, no, no, you, you have to sell it to me this price. I didn't change the tags. Every other one is marked the same price. Your, your problem is not my problem. You made the mistake, not me. So she calls in her manager. Manager comes over. And, and here I am with this gift certificate from Florence Avenue, Four Square Church, Adult Sunday School Department. And I'm being a jerk because I got. A deal. And, and, and long and short of it is, they, they sell them to me. And I walk away, and I don't get out of the department, and I hear, and, and, and by the way, I didn't hear it, I felt it. Do you ever grieve the Holy Spirit? Do you ever say something 
You ever do something and, and just moments later you just, that, was, that wasn't right. That wasn't right. And I knew before I got out of that department, I needed to do something about it. Well, no, 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 not before we argued. That's the Holy Spirit in me. By the way, if you're trying to grow in Christ, you'll never win an argument with the Holy Spirit. So we argued for a few minutes. And, of course, I went back, put the counter, jackets back up on the counter and said, hey. And, by the way, they had gotten rid, they, they'd pulled every jacket off that area. And, and I, you know, I just took it back. And I went back to the counter. They'd already pulled all the other coats off the rack. And I said, hey, I, I apologize for pushing this issue. You know, I, I, I know somebody's going to get in trouble over this. And I, I know I was legally correct, but being legally correct doesn't give me the right. And they look at me like, man, are you smoking something we don't know about? <laughs> and they asked me why, and I said, well, the Holy Spirit really convicted me. And that really upset them. They didn't know what I, who I was then. And I said, here's the deal. Here, just take the coats back. Give me whatever I paid for the coats, and I'll go find something I can buy, I can afford. And the manager came over, and she goes, no, no. She, and I said, no, no, I don't want somebody, they made a mistake. I don't want somebody getting in trouble or even fired. She goes, no, no, no. And, she said, and the thing was, the understanding was, because you brought them back, we're going to let you have them, and nobody's going to get in trouble. So then I went out there with a clean conscience, and the Holy Spirit was going, that's better now. See, the reality is, when we know we've done wrong, when we know we've grieved, then we need to make it right immediately. It's a horrible word, but it means repent. But if you want to keep a short list with God, repent often and respond every time the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live your life. I know there's Christians that just unbelievably now stop right there just let it go and so I know it's a dumb story but I know to this day that was a time that the Holy Spirit says no and what a transformation when I left 10 minutes later that the Holy Spirit says okay it wasn't that hard was it I'm not guaranteeing you're going to get the coats at the same price every time, okay? But I'm going to say your heart's going to feel a whole lot better. We need to be a people who can do that. 100-day challenge. Let's be careful. Sensitive to the Holy Spirit in our lives, especially when we feel smug. Because I was smug. I had, they made a mistake and I caught them. And I made them pay. And the Holy Spirit says, go back. By the way, those are still wonderful jackets. I couldn't put my arm in one of them. <laughs> Do I still? I probably still have them. They're only 40 years old. Yeah. I have suits I got into when I was 80 pounds less. But there come a day. I'll probably be buried in it if they take it. <laughs> Next one. 100-day challenge. We can do it. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and respond. 31. This, this is going to take a few more minutes. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Wow. How are we doing on that one? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. NLT says, all types of evil behavior. Paul now lists a cluster of evil characteristics descriptive of the old nature. What's interesting is we read through this list, each trait has an internal relationship to the next trait. As in Romans, I know we've all read Romans 1, we've all read 18 to 32, that downward spiral of mankind as we open our lives and let sin have its way. In fact, Romans 18, uh, 1, 32 says, And in the end, 
they will end up in debauchery, encouraging, approving, and one translation saying, voting for those who practice such debauchery. Romans 1.32. First thing, don't let, all, let all bitterness, having a highly irritated state of mind, always having a chip on one's shoulders, always able to find fault. Let me tell you something, folks. There is no gift of criticism. There is no gift of fault finding. You run into people and think, man, I don't care. You, you, you could have baked the best cake that ever was made. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, I don't know. That's quite done right. Here, have the cake. We need to be careful. Bitterness. And, and if we walk around angry all the time, walk around with a chip on our shoulder, we need to be careful for that. Lord, help me. That's not exhibiting Jesus Christ. That's not the new man. The new man is joyful and joy-filled and hope-filled through Jesus Christ. The first one is bitterness. The second one is wrath. Now that bitterness that is irritant has now come to fury. Now you're beginning to plot vengeance, fixated on getting back. From there you go to anger. Now you become, by the way, this is a different word. It's a different root. I mean, same root, but a different word. This is a compound word for anger. Passionate about this situation. It's consuming a person. Same root as be angry and do not sin, but this is taken to a whole new level. You ever heard of the word ogre? That's this word. That's where we get, it's the Greek word, ogre. That's where we get the word monster or ogre. This, this word for anger in Greek is ogre. So now, Greek lesson, there you go. Not that hard. It means monster. That idea of being unhinged. Notice the downward spiral. The next one is, is easy because the next one, you go from that to clamor. You're so frustrated. You're so angry. Now you're going to get mad. Do you have that? Do you find that? Let's have it. The word means screeching. And if you've heard this poor lady, she was so frustrated, so angry. She was so, oh, she just screeched. And, and uh, you don't have it, do you? I don't know. If you've ever heard it, she just is screeching. And, and that should not be so among us. You can take it down. You ever get there? We need to be checked for that. Because when that happens, then we start inventing and slander and evil speaking. All of this needs to be put away from you along with all malice. Paul, again, is talking in Colossians about the new person. But now you, yourselves, are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language. All of that should not out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put, on, since you have put off the old man with his de deeds and you have now put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Amen? Both, both two, different, two different churches, two different cities, same thing. It's the same thing, and no matter what city we live in, God is calling us to be a people who are new in him. Old things must pass away. All things must become new. The characteristics that identified us to be done away with that weren't godly. We're to put on the new person. 100-day challenge. Can we let those things go? Can we now receive the end of the chapter about the things we're supposed to put on? Here is how the new person, the new man, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. New Living says this, Instead of these other things, the wrath, the malice, all that, be kind to each other. 
tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as God, as God through Christ has forgiven you. Paul again refocuses on the characteristics of the new person, kind to one another. The same root for kind here is the same word that we have for grace. Do we have grace for one another? I, I want to encourage anyone who thinks they have the gift of picking it all apart or when somebody makes a mistake that we're going to point it out. Lord, let us have grace for one another. Amen? I, I really, it, it hurts so much that I just, I want us to, to love and be kind and have grace where we can, we, we, we can overlook. Yes, they blew it. I know you've never blown it. I know you were never late to an appointment. I know you never forgot an appointment. I know that you never promised to do something and then not do it. I know that you never said, well, I'll be there, and you weren't there. See, we need to be a people who overlook those things. It doesn't mean that, that, that anybody can get away with anything. It just means it's not up to you and I to correct the world. It's you and I to live Jesus, and Jesus can correct the world. Being aware of others' well-being, tender-hearted, actually sensitive in speech and manner, caring, and going our way for the benefit of another, without expecting of anything in return. But the reality is, we got to, if we want to be Christ-like, if we want to be what God has called us to be in the new man, be kind to one another. This wraps it up, brings us back into unity. These are the things that we need to take off and these are the things that we need to add to our life, allowing the Holy Spirit to correct us gently as we go through life. Holy Spirit didn't smack me down when I was leaving with those two tweed coats with leather patches. But I knew that I knew that I knew he was disappointed in me. And I tell you, the argument wasn't really that long. It's their mistake. I didn't say it wasn't. If you're going to live under the guidance and the power and the love of the Holy Spirit, be obedient to the Holy Spirit because you're going to live a lot better life. Amen? If you cannot love or forgive your brother whom you can see, you'll not be able to love God whom you cannot see. We got a 100-day challenge. Can we allow the Holy Spirit to grow us in Him? Are we open to the fact that there are some characteristics that God says need to be evident in our life? And there are some characteristics that should not be evident in our life. I know some of you are saying, well, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. Well, let's pray about pride. I know some of the characteristics and habits that are displeasing are lifelong, and God wants to help with that. Only God can choose. You can't do it on you. You can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps. What a stupid expression. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Careful, Greg, careful, careful. <laughs> I'm going to get tall. I got the, you guys know what bootstraps are? Okay, you didn't, you, you had to have uh, good boots and bootstraps. Put them on and then just pull yourself up, get taller. I never ever understood that expression. But I, I want us in the 100 Days Challenge, Lord, I, I want to I, I be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Lord, you've already, I don't have to say anything. You've already know where the Holy Spirit's touched you this morning. He's touched every one of us in one area or another. And if he hasn't touched you, then let's pray for hard-heartedness. But he's working. We've been praying. The elders prayed this morning. We prayed before service. Lord, just move in each of us. Not, that's what I love about where we're at. It's not pr move in them. Move in me first. Move in me. I'm open to whatever you want to do. And, and we're just going to, Lord... We, we come before you, Lord, and it's just, I, 
I, I take the challenge, Lord. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable, be pleasant in your sight, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray that we, each of us, Lord, who, who take this challenge, you say, Lord, I want to draw closer. I want to be more sensitive to your spirit. I want to be more obedient to your correction. Lord, that our desire would be more like Jesus. That, Lord, as we become the new person that you've designed us to be in Christ, there would be more of an impact into our families, our neighborhoods, our jobs wherever we're at. So, Lord, I accept this challenge, but I know, Lord, I can't do it without you. And, Lord, those areas that you've convicted of, Lord, we release them to you. We acknowledge them. We repent. We ask you, forgive us and strengthen us, Lord, so that we can resist. In Jesus' name.